Britain has some of the most congested roads in Europe. And it's the emergency services on two wheels that can side through the traffic and get vital help where it's needed, fast. Police and paramedic bikers across the country race to protect the public and save lives. Coming up, a woman's in trouble. Ow! <laughs> Why it doesn't pay to answer back. See you in court for careless driving then. A man oh, fights for his life. Kick still, kick still. Kick still. Kick still. The dangers of dotty suspension. It's a bit like Russian roulette. And the Birmingham paramedics meet some furry friends. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> City centre. It's the middle of a busy day for the biker paramedics. They can take up to 20 emergency calls a day, and the next one's coming in. Responding, Mark Hayes. On his Yamaha FJR 1300, Mark can sprint across town faster than an ambulance. The bikes carry all the same equipment as an ambulance and are fitted with our cameras. So we arrive at the scene of an incident the second they do. Ambulance crews and the fire service are already on scene, but they need Mark's help. There could be serious injuries. Hello, mate. Hello. Say hello. Come on, mate. Say hello for us. You say hello. Come on, then. You can do it. Is he with it yet, Mark? His eyes are open. He's moving about. He's not responding right. The situation's critical. The air ambulance has been called. All right, keep still, mate. Keep still. Keep still, mate. Can you talk to us? Keep still. No, no, don't fight. It's all right. I'd like to get a, a cannula in for a... The man's not responding to any commands, and he's wrestling against the crews. Both symptoms of serious head injury. It'd be better to take the head from that side. You have his head, and I'll go and climb in. It'd be better to do it from inside because they're going to want to start doing stuff around here. This man needs urgent treatment. The fire service wastes no time cutting the car to get him out. Nice and still. All right, it's okay. All right, it's all right, mate. Keep still. It's okay, mate. It's all right. Wait, 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 wait. It's all right, mate. It's all right. Unable to communicate with the man, Mark can't find out what other injuries he's got. All right, mate. It's okay. If his spine is broken, the man's involuntary struggling could paralyze him. Keep still. Mark has to battle to keep him still. Keep still. Keep still. It's all right. The air ambulance carries a specialist A&E doctor who's authorised to give more powerful drugs. He's trapped, he's got a head injury, he's not working with us very well. So to protect him, to protect his brain from any injury, we're going to put him off to sleep, giving him an anaesthetic, and then take him to hospital in a far more controlled manner than we would otherwise having to hold him down and struggle all the way. So it's protecting him and protecting us, but mostly protecting his brain from any further injury. Nearly done, matey. You're doing very well. All they're doing now is lifting the roof over us and it's nice and clear then. And we can With the man partially anyway. sedated, right. the crew can quickly remove the roof second, and start move. to extricate him. Well done. Just try to keep, keep as still as you can, all right? Let me climb into the back and get in a better position so I can maintain the head. You got the head? The medical team have assessed the patient and decided on the best hospital for him, which is just three minutes by road. Okay, got the head. It'll be quicker to take him in the ambulance. Okay. When everybody's ready, um, it'll be on three, all right? One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Can we lay the ball back? Start to lay it back, support the board. Can we have some more buds around this side, please? Here we go. On three again. One, two, three. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, we just Here we go again. Okay. Okay. All right, I've got the head. Got the head. Okay. On the ambulance, the doctors put the man to sleep completely for the journey. 
what we've done is we've given an anaesthetic, as you can see, he's, he's now asleep just as you would be in hospital having an anaesthetic. All that means is I can control his breathing, control his oxygen, protect his brain from any further injury, and look after him in a far more stable situation. Good to go? Massive passenger space intrusion. I'm amazed he's alive. Still to come, a heavy fall by a canal. Essex biker cops want an answer. Oh, with it. Is that a yes, I was, officer, or no, I wasn't? And a ten-year-old girl's come a cropper in the playground. Oxfordshire, home to the biker paramedics of the South Central Ambulance Service. On duty this morning, paramedic Eddie Webb. A 999 call is coming in. Yeah, I'm to a 64-year-old male who is The South Central Ambulance Service covers an area of 4,500 square miles, and the bikers are vital in getting help where it's needed fast. <laughs> just three miles away. Eddie's at the scene in five minutes. The address he's been given is a marina on the Oxford Canal. Having a seizure near water is extremely dangerous. Luckily, the patient's with members of his family. Great. What happened? He had a bit of a fit. He had a heart attack about four, four three years ago. And he had some brain, slight brain injury. Right. And uh, he's had this before. He just um, has slight fits. And of course, this time he just had a slight fit and fell down. It's not a very good place to fall down, as you no. can see. So What's Giles, the chap's name? Giles, Giles Boyd, Boyd. my brother. G Giles. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Giles? Yeah. Do you remember what happened? There's little Eddie can do for the man here on the ground. He needs to get him into an ambulance and off to hospital. He has what's called right. Gardner syndrome. Yeah, um, he's got a so he's had that, he was resuscitated from a heart attack and brought and, and brought back to life. Um, right. and so he's got an, an internal yeah, an internal yes, defibrillator. defibrillator. Yes. Regarder's syndrome is a rare inherited condition that was only identified 20 years ago. Also known as sudden death syndrome, it causes the heart to stop without warning. Sufferers right. have an internal so defibrillator implanted in to automatically restart it. Yes. All right, and Giles, we're getting sorted out. And he fell down. He on, fell down on the right gravel here, here on the gravel, right, right, right through his head there. Giles's heart attack starved his brain of oxygen. The resulting brain damage now leaves him vulnerable to seizures. How are you feeling just now? Sorry. How are you feeling just now? He had a nasty bash, as you can see. Yeah. Yeah. Giles, yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to get you up onto a trolley and into the ambulance, all right? Yeah. And we'll have a good look at you once we've yeah. got you in there. Yeah. Yeah. All, right. All, right. all right, just bear with us. Yeah. Okay. He was in what they call post-ectal stage, which is the, the phase following a fit. So a bit confused, very sort of tired, a bit washed out. Um, and that's typical um, uh, behaviour after having had a fit. Because of his past medical history and his head injury and um, what had happened today with him having a fit, um, yeah, there wasn't really any reason to hang around here. Um, if he's had a fit, it's a fair assumption that he could have another one and that needs to be treated immediately. The head injury could have underlying fractures or anything like that, so it was better off that he was on his, on his way to hospital rather than um, us messing about around here. Luckily for Giles, Eddie and the ambulance were on scene fast. Giles will now be taken to hospital, where doctors will treat his facial injury and keep him under observation. Essex, early Sunday morning. On patrol, PC Lucy Watson. Lucy's the only woman among the nine strong biker squad of the Essex police. Since passing her exams a year ago, she's been patrolling her home patch between Basildon and Southend on Sea. Today, she's heading for a diner on the outskirts of Southend that's famous for its bike meets. But this is no social visit. 
Lucy's on a serious mission. She's promoting Bike Safe, a nationwide scheme to reduce the numbers of bikers killed and seriously injured on the roads. I've been to two or three of these. All oh, right. I think they're well worth it. Bikers are more likely than any other road users to have accidents. Over 6,000 bikers are killed or seriously injured each year. For Lucy, a morning like this is the perfect opportunity to spread the word about safety and indulge her love of bikes. New Essex Police Patrol bike? Maybe not. <laughs> We'd never have time to clean it. It's lovely, isn't it? Is that the girls? That's a super rocket. Right. It's 1962. With bikers signed up for courses, Lucy's work here is done. She's back on her BMW R1200RT and heading to Basildon when she's called to a collision. Hello there. You come about this episode here? I have, yeah. Oh, thank you. Were you one of the drivers? Yes, yes. How old are you, sir? Uh, 74. Okay, so because you've been involved in a road traffic collision, I'm going to require a specimen of breath from you. Certainly. All right, I must warn you, if you fail or refuse to do that, then you could be arrested, no, do you understand? No, no, no. Take a I deep, don't drink. Okay, take a deep breath, seal it around the tube, and blow until I tell you to stop, please. That'll do. Thank you. You get to keep that as a souvenir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no arrest. I'm not going to arrest you, sir, but I'm going to give you a quick interview in a moment. I just need to go and breathalyse the other driver, OK? Meanwhile, Lucy's colleague Mark's got a hunch about this driver. So where did you get your sunglasses from? From the door All oh, right. So not a prescription or anything? No. Right, OK. No, no, no. Right on. Up you know. Right. What's the registration plate of that vehicle over there? R-F. Yeah? Trying to read a registration yeah. plate One. on the other side yeah. of the road, Five. he only manages four Five. of the seven characters correctly. Okay. okay, I want to caution you that you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence, you do not mention my question. Something which you may later rely on in court, and anything that you do say may be given in evidence. Should you be wearing glasses when you drive? Yeah. Where are you wearing those glasses? Yeah, I put some glasses That's on why you back. take them out of your pocket? Yeah, well, I put them on when I got yeah. out. Well, I what I'm saying to you is those out. glasses are not prescription glasses and they will not assist you no. in terms of your vision for driving. Am I right or wrong? I had them on when I was driving. Yeah, but they're not prescription, are they? No, no. So no. if they're not prescription... Oh, yeah, yeah, they they're not. Yeah. They're not... Yeah, I've got my benefit, they are prescription. You lied to me, you just said to me that they weren't. No, well, I... I, I You're in the caution? Yeah, I know, I've got so they're in there. What's there? No, no. I don't mind when I'm driving. No. You have, you have, irrespective of that, you have difficulty reading that number plate because that is not the registration plate of that vehicle. Basically, what I'm going to do is interview you under caution in relation to the collision, and then we'll decide what we're going to do with you. Okay. I wish to question you in relation to a road traffic collision. I didn't sign nothing. Okay. What? Did you just sign that for me? I'm not signing nothing. You're already under caution. I'm going to be reporting you for careless driving. Yeah. Okay. I was going to offer you the driver improvement scheme, but if you don't, uh, would, would save I'm you going. going to... Forty years. Okay. Well, we'll see you in court for careless driving then. Defective or uncorrected eyesight is the cause of nearly 50 fatal or serious traffic accidents every year. Yeah. All right. We're just taking them off. They've got to be somewhere close to hand, aren't they? they, they come on. What is it going to be? Are they your driving glasses? No, they're not really. All right, well, you've got another set in there, haven't you? You've got another set of glasses in your yeah, pocket. They're reading, they're for reading. All right, up. okay. Nobody knows your glasses like you know your glasses. So, I'll put them, you know. Where are the glasses? Are you telling me those are the glasses you're wearing when you're driving? Bear in mind you're under caution. No, right, so why are we looking through them then? Right. You've got another pair in there, try them on. No, Are you absolutely certain? Because I'm giving you every opportunity here, fella. You You've got two pairs on now. Yeah, right, so either one of those pair of glasses, which one of those, if at all, were you wearing when you're driving? Are you wearing that pair? Yeah, I think you are. You, th you think you are? 
Was that a yes or was, officer, or a no or wasn't? Then. Right, come this way then. Mark set up an improvised sight test with a traffic cone and a tape measure. By law, drivers must be able to read a number plate that's 20 metres away. Look that way, you see a blue car. Yeah. Tell me what the registration of the blue, blue car is. No, I can't read it. Why can't you read it? Is it out of focus? Hmm? Is it out of focus yeah, for you? Okay. Focus. Look at your glasses on. Keep your glasses on. Because they're going to help you, aren't they? Keep looking at the registration plate. Yeah. And tell me when you can start to read it. The man has to walk nearly nine metres towards the car to before he gets the number plate the right. Excellent, we got them in the end. Look down, come on this side so you can see where my foot is. Right. 38 feet. Wherever that is in metres, I'm an Imperial man myself. Alright. So, the law says, just so as you know, you should be able to read a number plate with either unassisted eyesight or assisted eyesight, i.e. with your glasses on or off, whatever's good for you, whatever works, from no less than 67 feet, which is where that cone is. You can read it until we've gotten to here, yeah, which is 38. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so you're well within. Alright, so we've bottomed that out. I'm not making... Lucy's not impressed. It's just quite arrogant really, he can't see anything wrong with his driving, trying to blame other people. You know, I've got some issues with his eyesight and that will be reported to the DVLA. But um, it's, it's not uncommon. The driver pleaded guilty to careless driving, was fined £100 yeah, pounds, and received six points on his licence. <laughs> in Birmingham, it's mid-morning and a 999 call's coming in. Responding, biker paramedic Steve Harris. The call is from a school. A child's had a nasty fall in the playground and hit her head. This could be serious. Every year, over 40,000 children are admitted to hospital after playground accidents. That's over 100 a day. The school's just over three miles away. Steve must get there as soon as possible. Within five minutes, he's arriving on scene. A member of staff's waiting to meet him. Are you with our lady? Yeah. Yeah, this is her dad. Her dad? So tell me what's happened. She's in, she's in the playground. Okay. She's playing uh, tick and tag with her friends. Yeah. And uh, she fell over. Okay. She smashed her head on the floor. Okay. It's quite a slap as well. The effects of a head injury in childhood can be life-changing. Does it hurt? Yeah. And just on your head or anywhere else? And have you got a headache? Or the first thing the Steve checks point? for are signs of concussion. You feel sick? Yeah? She's in year two. You, you, apart from when you fell over, you haven't fallen over since? You haven't been sick? Can I have a look underneath that and see what's there? You put your hand where the pain is. It's just there. Not going to press you, I promise. I think what we ought to do, because it's been half an hour and you still feel poorly, I think we ought to pop you down the hospital and get the nurse to have a look at you. Is that okay? Headache and nausea after a blow to the head are two symptoms of concussion. A child with such an injury must be monitored closely for the next few hours. Has she had any sort of cowpaw, paracetamol? No, no, no because we don't prescribe it. We don't, yeah. Yeah, give it to the parents. Parents okay. okay. Jesus to do that. And how old is she? How old are you, man? You're a dad, you should know. <laughs> I should have asked you, shouldn't I? Instead of asking your dad. Pop that in. And then take a big drink of water. Swallow it down. No, a big drink. Okay? Ten minutes or so, you should start to feel a bit better. When you fell down, did you hurt yourself anywhere else? Big deep breath for me. Breathe in. Hand out. It doesn't hurt your chest or your back, no? You've walked into here, and when you were walking, were your legs okay? Yeah? I've got a torch here, just want to shine this in your eyes, all right? Can you look at me? Straight at me. Because of the severity of her fall, it's essential that Sana gets checked okay. over in hospital to rule out the possibility of bleeding in the brain. That's fine. Right, Sana, shall we pop you in the ambulance car? Yeah? Here we go. Up you come. 
not every child who bumps a head needs to be assessed in hospital. Uh, in this case, because it had been going on for some time, over half an hour, uh, because of the amount of pain she was in and the dizziness and nausea, uh, it's best to get her checked just to make sure that there's no uh, underlying problem. Still to come, a man with How Parkinson's you disease has had a nasty fall. So no pain there. Eagle-eyed biker cops spot a problem with a van. That's absolutely jigging. And a rush hour crash leaves a driver in distress. Ow, my back, my back. <laughs> Early morning, there's been a major crash. Reports of an RTC near the uh, Birmingham City football ground. That's as much as we know. The calls to a road traffic collision on the other side of the city. When Mark arrives, both drivers are out of their cars, but one is extremely distressed. Any sign of back pain means Mark must keep Aoife's head as still as possible. Any injury could have been made worse by getting out of the car. I want you to keep your head, your neck and your back nice and still. All right. Just go, it's all right, you're going to be OK. All right. You're in your seatbelt and that in the car. Yeah, all right. Mark's worried about broken vertebrae. Crashes are extremely dangerous for the spine and are the number one cause of spinal injury in the UK. The spine is made up of 33 vertebrae and all the nerves controlling every limb and organ in the body run down the middle of them. Keep nice and still. How young are you? 18. 18. Intact, the spine is a strong structure, but if just one vertebra is broken, it can be enough to sever the nerves, causing permanent paralysis. Keep nice and still. It's really important now that you, that you keep still. All right. What we're going to do in a second, we're just going to lie you straight back uh, with a board behind you. Uh, young ladies, driver of the uh, Peugeot, you can see front end damage. Out the vehicle, walking around on scene. C spine's clear. She does have a uh, lumbar region tenderness on palpation. So uh, I've explained to her that we need to immobilise her. Yep. So that's what we'll do. All right, what we'll do well, is just, we'll, you just, just hold the blanket. What we're going to do in this second, we're just going to lie down. It's going to feel like you're, put, you're falling. You're not falling. All right, you just got to trust us. On three, one, two, three. The risk is go. so Relax. great Relax. that Mark Relax. and the ambulance Relax. crew have to Relax. take every precaution yeah. before trying yeah. to move Eva. Right. <laughs> what we're going to do is just feed the board up. We won't move her, we'll just feed the board up. Yeah. Okay, on, three. on your call, chap. Yeah. On go. three. Yeah. One, two, three. Go. Oh, okay. Oh, my back. Is it still the same place? Oh, yeah, it's really bad. Ow! <laughs> 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 She's going to go tight across the chest. All right. I'm not going to do it tight, sweetheart. All right, I know. It's all right, sweetheart. Oh, my back. I know. Just let your body go all in. Try not to tense. All right. It's worse than the little bit. All right, Teresa. on his way there. It's just going to go tight. It's just to keep you nice and still, alright. It's, it's alright. Yeah. I've got to give I'll you a breath, I'll do it on the ambulance. It's a fairly old vehicle. Um, it is equipped with airbags, but they've, uh, they've not gone off for whatever reason. She's walking on scene, no fins and needles, um, GCS 15. What she's complaining of is, is classic um, whiplash type injuries. The adrenaline starts to pump, and it's only you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes after the accident, they start to feel a bit of a twinge here, start to ache. See, it's a reasonable way, uh, distance away from the steering wheel. She's got a seat belt on, no airbag. I'm sure had, had the airbag uh, been deployed, um, that would have restricted her movement even more. And, and maybe um, uh, she wouldn't have the complaint that she's got now. Aoife will be taken to hospital, where her spine will be x-rayed. Doctors will investigate the cause of the pain in her back. <laughs> North Yorkshire, late Saturday morning. A busy time on the roads for the officers of the North Yorkshire Police Biker Squad. On duty today, PC Martin Smith. The 
This morning, Martin's patrolling the A1M dual carriageway south of Darlington. He's not long been on the road when the blue van up ahead catches his eye. He signals for it to pull over. Oh yeah. Now the reason I've stopped you is because your van's doing a lot of bouncing. I just want to have a look at your back suspension. I don't know whether your shocks are tired or... They're not normally as bouncy as that. All right. Right, let's just have a look at the back end first. Is it loaded? It's obviously empty. Oh, exactly. Just, just, all right, just a parcel. In fact, all weights up front, isn't it? That loud. All right. See if we can see anything. You say it's MLT? Definitely MLT. Till yeah. when? Uh, when was it done? Maybe about six months since it was done. I can't think of it. Right. Without being cheeky, how are you for bending down? Go on. That's absolutely jiggered. Yeah. Go have a look at the one. Yeah, it's it leaking is. Leaking like Billy. Yeah. On average, one explain? driver every week is killed or well, seriously injured on the UK's roads as a direct yeah, result of defective steering or suspension. If that shock were mounted on there straight, it yeah. should be it should be on the it's on an angle, isn't it? Yeah, it's certainly it's gonna work because you can see what's happened with that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that one's gone dry. Yeah, this one's jigged seal. Because the thing is, I mean where you're going you're from Richmond, aren't you? Yeah. I'm off to Darlington now. Right. Well to be fair, you're not going with that. Because as soon as you get on a twisty, bendy road, and forgive me jumping on it, there's absolutely, look at that. Yeah, I can understand that, yeah. As soon as you start going on a road and that van starts to bounce, yeah. it's going to affect the front end yeah. and you're not going anywhere. They're not going to be over nasty about it, but it's it's not right. Oh, that's fair enough. All right, so I say, I don't want you involved in an accident, then you no, can't no, think no, no. explain. I'm looking at the van as I'm riding along, as you do, things occur to you. And every undulation he goes to, instead of the van rising and falling with the suspension bumping, you can see that the van then starts to bounce in time with the suspension and the shock absorbers on the van, this one has obviously leaked and gone dry and it's jiggered the seals and it's just solid. The other one on that side, it's in the process of going, the seal is damaged, it's poured fluid out all down the shock absorber but neither is absorbing the shock from the vehicle. As I say, I'm not going to be daft with you but I'm going to go by ministry standards but I mean in my opinion it should not be going no, anywhere. As I say, I didn't know though. Obviously. I had noticed it bouncing up and down and kicking stuff about it back and forth. Right. Well, the only thing I can say is if it's been bouncing up and down, it's shifted loads at the front near a better end, hasn't it? Right, it says if the malfunctioning or fractured, likely to affect the steering, which that is, then the vehicle should come off the road. Right. All right? So I think what I'm going to do, because obviously it affects me if I let that vehicle go and anything goes wrong, yeah. and it's a bit like Russian roulette, any one day of the week it might not go wrong, but another day it yeah, might. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to take the vehicle off the road. So where will we be putting it? Right, well, have you got a garage that can come out and pick it up and tow it? Uh, it should go full lift. What do you mean full lift? Off the road. No, it should go off the road, he says. Fortunately, the driver has a friend right. with a pickup who's on his way. As long as your documentation is in order, it's a fine and no points. Because right. obviously it's going to cost you money to put it right, yeah. and it's going to cost you money to put it through an MOT yeah. test. So. I suppose if punishment is meted out by money, it's going to cost you money. <laughs> All right, it's the same as a rather large parking ticket, I would suppose. It costs a lot more. All right? What's it cost this way? 60 pounds. All right? That vehicle now has to be repaired MLT. and then taken for MOT. The only reason it should be on the road is going to or from that pre arranged yeah. MOT. So, seven days for documents, yeah. 28 days to pay. The prohibition comes off subject to the MOT. Right, that's great. Any problems? Going to, Reith, going to Richmond Police Station, yeah. asking for him. Mr. Maintaining, how are they? All right, take care. The problem comes is I hear this a lot, oh, you're very severe. But if that vehicle's involved in an accident, and we don't know which vehicle's going to be involved in which accident where, and it's as a result of the shock absorbers, the handling, causing that accident, then we have mayhem and we have lots of questions and then people want inquiries. The, the problem is you're then dealing with it after the event and if a person is severely injured or their life's taken away it's too late really the man was given a 60 pound fine and he'll have to get his van fixed if he wants to use it on the roads again <laughs> 
220 miles south of the city of Oxford. Biker paramedic Eddie yeah, Webb is receiving a 999 call. Control. An 85-year-old man with Parkinson's disease has had a nasty fall. Parkinson's is an illness of the nervous system. It affects more than 120,000 people in the UK. Nerve cells in the brain start to fail, preventing proper communication with the body. Common symptoms are shaking, difficulty with movement and poor coordination. Falls are common and can be serious. I don't know about that. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. What's happened to you then? I fell over. Right. Have you hurt yourself at all? Just on your hand there. That's really the main thing. Okay. What do we call you? Francis. Francis, a retired Oxford University academic, was only diagnosed with Parkinson's disease a year ago. That flap probably needs a good clean and um, it probably doesn't need stitched, but it probably needs put back in place. Can you do that? I'm afraid not. Mm. I've not got the facilities to clean it properly so that you've got no chance of an infection or something like that in it later. So what we'll do is we'll get you onto an ambulance and get you popped up and get them to have a look at it if that's all right. Yes, fine. Yep, okay. Go. And you say you've hurt your back a little bit? Banged it on the... On the on the, that structure, you know. The thing they give you to put on the top of a, top of a lavatory. All right, yeah, on the cistern. No, on, on the seat. On the seat, all right, okay, do um, Where about in your back does it hurt? Just about the middle. About the middle. So how about you, how does your neck feel? Fine. So no pain there? No pain there. No pain there? No. I don't think it's anything, honestly. Parkinson's is degenerative. Once it starts, it will just get worse and worse. There's no cure. Let me just pop this on the back of your hand, Francis, and then I'll pop it in place with a bandage. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Yes, sir. If you can just hold it on your lap there for a second, and I'll get a bandage to put on it. Please to keep in place. How long do you think that'll be over? Um, not too long. They'll get you back as soon as it's practical to get you back, that's for sure. Don't you fancy an overnight stay then? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> I don't blame you. Hospital food these days. But watch what I say, I'll be getting in trouble for saying things like that. <laughs> the cut is deep, but not serious. It will need hospital treatment to be properly cleaned out and perhaps stitched. But Eddie has other concerns. Have you had a few falls then? One or two years. You have. That's it, Parkinson's. <laughs> Is that what, what makes you lose your balance? Probably, yes. Yeah. OK, how long have you had this, then? This part of a year. All right. Not very long. No, no. Do you use it as a walking frame or a stick or anything at all, Francis? I've got a, a Zimmer frame. Yeah, a frame to walk in front of. Is that it's holding behind. Behind. To walk behind, sorry, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's in front, yeah. Eddie's worried about Francis falling again. Oh, yeah, you just As people with Parkinson's gradually deteriorate, the health Sit. service works to make oh, their homes safe. Thank you. Rails and handles can be installed to aid walking, and sharp objects and edges removed to prevent serious injury in the event of a fall. We're on wheels at the back, so we're just going to wheel you out. You can get her in the second. Francis will be in and out of hospital quickly, but this fall may signify a change of living arrangements at home. The main thing from this chap's point of view is that we've got the falls team I'm involved and they'll come out and assess his house and assess him and if there's anything, any aids that they can give him uh, to, to help his, his mobility, um, then that'll be done. Still to come, Hiya. a man's collapsed Still, in a bus open shelter. Your eyes, open your eyes, talk to me. And Mark and Steve play for high stakes. <laughs> City Centre, late afternoon. An emergency calls come in to paramedic biker Steve. A man's collapsed in the street. The call's only a few hundred yards away, but the only detail Steve's got is that a man's unconscious at a bus stop somewhere on this busy city centre junction. Steve sees 
someone waving to attract his attention. Hello there. Hiya. Hello there. Hiya. Go on, open your eyes. Steve Speak can English. smell alcohol, but until he's eliminated everything open else, he can't Talk be sure what you. the problem is. Members of the public believe he's drunk, but until I've done this test, I'm not going to say that's the problem. I am not jumping to conclusions. Okay, he's drunk. Okay. Hello there. Come on, wake up. While Steve's begun rousing the man, Mark's arrived as backup. Okay? It's not unknown for drunks on, to turn on the up. ambulance crew, but this man seems quite docile. Wake up for me. Come on, mate. How much you had to drink? Hello? Talk to me. How much you had to drink? You speak English? You do speak English. You, can, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah? You can't get asleep. You gotta keep your eyes open. Come on, mate. Have you hurt yourself? Do you have any pain? Come on, mate. What are you doing? What's going to happen? How's that feel? Unfortunately, because we're not getting any joy out of it, uh, what can we do? Uh, we can't really leave him in the bus stop. I'm sure he's going to end up on the floor again and we'll have another 999 call. So uh, we'll wait for an ambulance to come and have a word with the crew. Uh, see how cooperative he is about uh, being taken away. The language barrier is not making it easy for Steve to gather any information about the man. Do you suffer with anything? Do you have medical problems? No. You had nothing to drink? No? No. Okay, we'll pop you down to the hospital. Mark has a go at getting through. Spanish? Yeah. Oh, Polsky? Yeah. He's picked up a Are couple of words of Polish, uh... so it's worth a try. Jakobash? You. You. With Polish school. You uh, speak, uh, uh, um, Polsky? Oh, oh. Yeah. No. The ambulance crew arrives to take the man to hospital. Let's put you in the ambulance. Ambulance, uh, yeah? Come on. Uh, uh, Dudley Road. Dudley Road. Yeah. Best thing we can do. Pop him up to the local casualty, let them have him. He'll stay there a couple of hours and then presumably be released and uh, have a walk back up, wherever that is. You know, he's, he's not uh, incoherent, he's, he's trying to talk. Uh, he recognises some words, he, he told us Dudley Road. Uh, I'm sure that if we manage to get a, a proper name out of him, he'll be on uh, record at Dudley Road Hospital. So, yeah. I'll leave you with him. Yeah, just All right, thank you. day jobs that Mark and Steve like to make a difference. This evening, they're at a local social club, helping out with a fundraising effort very close to Steve's heart. We're trying to raise money for the Acorns Children's Hospice. My partner's grandson was a patient in the hospice and died there. The job that we do is, you know, we're helping people who, are, who need us. Well, sometimes we and our families need help themselves. 
over the last few years we've raised just under £24,000 and we're going to add to that tonight. Tonight's star turns, helping raise the cash, are four-legged friends, because this evening, Barrett Racing's come to Smithing. It's an excellent evening. Um, I've brought the wife and the kids, thoroughly enjoy it. Um, and I do hear they've got a, a grey ferret that looks a bit like Steve. <laughs> <laughs> if it's grey, I shall have it. I shall, I shall bet on that. <laughs> As the evening gets underway, Steve makes himself useful taking the bets. Two for number six. Two number six. I give him my money to him. <laughs> I'll give it to you, I'll give it to you. Tonight's main oh, event is a special oh, emergency right. bikers race, but there are several other races first. Ready, a steady, a let's go! Ferrets are fast and can reach top speeds of over 40 miles an hour in pursuit of their prey. But today's races yeah, are unlikely to set any records. <laughs> Two, three, five, six. Thank, Thank you. you. But the money's One, two, still three. rolling in. Finally, Steve and Mark get to meet their namesakes. Flymo Ferret. Okay, we have to go right. Now we need to go. Why is that loud? Flymo Ferret's in lane one and Forest Ferret's in lane two. There's ours. I mean, look how scrawny yours is. It doesn't matter. Come on, look. Flymo's eager to go, look. <laughs> look at that. No shouting flourish. <laughs> Flymo, right? You're a blue supporter. <laughs> and they're off. A lot's resting on these two laps of the course. Biker's honour and a £20 prize. Inquiry. Did Flymo Ferret completely cross the line? Oh, well, number were you? <laughs> two? <laughs> Where did two come? Um, after one. <laughs> I rest my case. Oh, dear, mate. The ferret versions of Forrest and Flymo might not have been first over the line, but for their human counterparts, it's been a very successful night, raising over a thousand pounds. I think the best ferret won. Well, not necessarily the best. You know, I mean, yes, I accept that yours was out the tube first, but I mean, mine was just a, it was a bit slower as all. Well. Twenty quid then. My feet was on speed first. Well, out the two of us anyway. <sighs> The man injured in the RTC spent a week in hospital being treated for his head injury. Is it still the same place? Eva was taken to hospital. She hadn't broken any bones, but had badly bruised her ribcage. Giles recovered from his seizure, but needed two stitches above his right eye. Sana had mild concussion and had to take three days off school, but is better now. And Francis had the cut on his hand glued in hospital, but sadly has had several falls since. However, he's had a lot of improvements made to his house, including new banisters and handrails.